Welcome to Lab 5. Thanks for joining us. What we've been doing is we've started a study in the book of James and we're going through it. The first thing James talks about is trials, problems that come into believers' lives. The flip side of this is temptation. And James is going to talk about temptation. I just want to look at one verse today. And I want us to see three things that James tells us about temptation. Come with me to James chapter 1. We're going to look at verse 13. James chapter 1, verse 13, it says this. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. Three things we need to realize about temptation. Number one, be real, be realistic. Every single one of us is tempted. It's not just like uh, some special class of people aren't tempted anymore. No, we're all tempted. We never grow out of it. We never get to the place where we're so spiritual that we're not tempted again. We are all tempted. Let me say something else about temptation. Being tempted is not a sin. The sin is when we give in to that temptation. So understand that. Being tempted is normal. In fact, the, the closer you get to God, the, the, the closer you, you, uh, you, grow, you, know, you grow in your faith, you're gonna be tempted. It's just the way it is. And being tempted is not a sin. Giving in to the sin is. So number one, be real, realistic. Number two, be responsible. We live in a culture that likes to blame everything on everybody else. Uh, same thing with temptation. We, believe, we uh, blame our parents, uh, our heredity, uh, our culture. We blame everybody else except ourselves. Here's the deal. We as believers now can make a choice whether to sin or not sin. Before Jesus Christ, we lived in sin. But because we have been freed by him, because we've accepted him as our savior, now we have a choice. And so when we make that choice to sin, be responsible, man up if you will, because we are the ones that choose to sin. This verse also tells us that God does not tempt us. God doesn't tempt us. Satan is the one that tempts us. And next week we'll see how it works. But understand, God does not tempt anyone. And number three, be ready. Temptation does not warn you. It doesn't send you a telegram or an email saying it's coming. It comes out of nowhere and it tempts you and it tempts you to do what is wrong. Again, we'll talk about this next week. The most dangerous time for believers as far as temptation is when we've had a great spiritual victory. When we have a great spiritual victory, the enemy of our soul wants to knock us back down. I remember we used to go to Promise Keepers and come back on mission trips and, and uh, maybe be spiritually high, spiritually fired up and ready to go. But I would warn the guys, I would warn the folks on the mission trip that as soon as we get back, Satan will greet the bus, will greet us as we get off the airplane and tempt us to leave our Lord and go another way to rebel against God. That's what temptation is, it's rebelling against God. But here's the deal, we have a choice. We have a choice. And you and I need to be ready for temptation. Temptation is not a sin. Giving in to temptation is. Jesus warns us. Jesus says, watch and pray. Peter says, be on your guard. Paul says, put on the armor of God to resist the devil, to resist temptation. Oh. Thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for coming here on Live at Five. And uh, next week, we'll talk about how this temptation works. James makes it very clear. It's an inside job. So again, thank you for joining us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for my brothers and sisters. Thank you for your word. Father, help us. Um, thank you for freeing us and giving us a choice. Father, let us, as your followers, make the right choice every single day. Father, help us when it comes to temptation because we need it. In Christ's name, amen. Again, thanks for joining us.